I've been playing a lot of Pangolier lately, and he's a pretty fun hero once you get good at him. I want to give you some tips and tricks on the hero, and uh, first starting off with Rolling Thunder, you've probably seen uh, the Pangolier player who goes around in a circle and can't hit the guy in the middle, or maybe even the Pango player that uh, uses his ulti and gets stuck somewhere like this, and he's just bouncing around. But you've probably seen this player, you know, uh, someone who plays Pangolier and does this every single match. And uh, I want to help prevent those sort of stuff from happening. So one of the most important things is that when you're rolling, you always try and go on roughly a straight line. It's really easy to just juke the Pangolier when he's trying to go around in a circle. So bouncing off a surface, even after the first hit that you use your ulti, uh, it's much easier to change your direction and get back and hit someone again. So even though it's not the fastest way to get a hit back on them, it's a lot more reliable to hit a second or third stun on the hero with your ulti. Now, the places where you use your ulti the first time are usually either in this section of the map or up here. This is if you're playing it in off lane. And similarly on the other side of the map, you can also, like a really strong area is in here near your side shop and also on the side shop over here. And I'll explain why those places are really strong in a little bit. You use your ultimate, you can go this direction and bouncing off of this surface is really easy to do and like you can do it on this one as well and same on the other side of the map it's very easy to hit these spots but a lot of people don't realize you can bounce off of that so easily. This has a hitbox and also this has a hitbox. Now there's also ones on the other side of the map and they're a little bit harder to they're not as good position, I think, in comparison to the Radiant offlane. You have to be quite accurate with this one. So here you hit this, but the stun has to come in between at a decent time. So you might want to hit off this guy and back again. So you can keep bouncing between like the two of these. And these are really important because uh, sometimes, let's say there's a player who's over here and they're walking up this direction. You might be here and use your ult on them the first time they're running away from you. One of the best places to go is in here and hit off of this and then you can hit them a second time over here. Uh, these are really important but the other stuff that's important is uh, cancelling your ulti when it ends. So sometimes people will hit say the second stun and they will keep rolling and let their ulti go till the very end and it'll end up here. Sometimes you want to actually end your ulti just after you stun them so that if you go in like this and you stun them and start attacking them. So while they're stunned you're actually getting right clicks in. So that's a, a relatively small thing to help you output a little bit more damage than you normally do. Now this area of the map is uh, much easier to hit your ultimate and you don't have to be precise about hitbox or whatever just solely because there's so many places that you can bounce off of. As long as you don't don't use your shield crash which is the hop there's so many things to hit off of here uh, the only one to be careful of is between this uh, pillar and the side shop you can kind of get stuck in this area and uh, using your hop you when you're in the earlier parts of the game you'll only get one usage of hop it's not until you get the level 15 talent of two seconds shield crash cooldown and ball uh, it's like pretty much really hard to like get out of places so if you do manage to get yourself stuck like i was showing you earlier like this uh, and you don't have a hop this is on cooldown you pretty much just want to end your ulti uh, if you end up being on a cliff or something uh just like teleport out but a lot sometimes you get stuck in places uh where sometimes it will just like snap you back into a like a position where it destroys the trees around you so you can a lot of the time just get out after you cancel your ulti so it's important to not just end your ult the other thing that's kind of useful as well is that sometimes when you're running away from the enemy you can just jump up onto the high ground here and teleport back to your fountain so those are like nice little escapes but in this part of the map you're significantly stronger so if we look at this area the map is quite similar and uh, this is where Axis standing now is one of the best and easiest spots to keep stunning someone. They're like the perfect distance apart this area is uh, just to keep someone constantly stunned here. And uh, you can pretty much keep chain stunning them and like even with like an early ultimate without even shield crash leveled. But uh, if we look at say like a part of the map like down here, there's actually only like a really small distance between these. So when you use your ultimate, it's quite hard in this area and the camera angle actually kind of uh, messes you up a little bit. So if your camera is positioned like this, the trees here are kind of blocking your vision of what you can see. And even there's like a weird spot in here where you, you can kind of pass, but you kind of can't. Like if you use your ult, what even happens? 
like it kind of messes you up probably a lot so it's really easy to misclick in this area typically when you're in the river and there's a cliff kind of in your way you want to move the camera up so that kind of like Pangalier is in the bottom half of your screen and other areas that's important is like here at the Roche pit you don't want these trees blocking you when you have your camera like this you'll accidentally click in the wrong places now the other places that have hitboxes on this side of the map are this big tree here and this like relic or diamond in the ground so these are easy to like bounce between they're relatively like easier to see as well because up here there's like trees blocking all of these that are like harder to see but this one is not positioned in as good as position as the like radiant offline just because if we look say here it takes a long time let's say i bash someone here or like boop them and then all the time it takes to go over here it's a much further distance away and uh this one is like in a much preferable position and it would pretty much be like as if it was positioned here it's kind of like unfair advantage the other thing is that uh, sometimes what happens up here is the support will be running through here as you see the cliff is really close to it over here but on the radiant side the difference is much bigger look they're all this tree line that nobody ever walks through people are usually walking in the tree line up around this area so if I was to use my ulti here and then I was to go in here and come out again uh, you see like half the duration if more is used up of my ultimate already by the time I get back out to bounce on someone a second time so it, there's a significant disadvantage to it and as well when you go in like this you can sometimes lose the vision of the enemy when they go in under their own tower now the last place that you'll end up having in the early to mid parts of the game is at mid lane as you would have guessed and these areas again are pretty easy to hit sometimes what you can do is you can go up onto the enemy high ground and make sure that you bounce like this back and forth you can also bounce like down on the low ground like this but the disadvantage of doing this is that you don't have vision up on the high ground so your allies might not be able to see the players up here so bouncing like just from say up here to here is significantly better than bouncing from here to here but just because of the high ground and low ground vision now the last one with uh, Rolling Thunder, which is a little bit different, is usage of your ultimate on the Roche Pit. Uh, this is a little bit harder to do and you have to time it properly, but bouncing back and forth like this can pretty much win you a big Roshan fight, which is really important. You can also get bashed by Roche and die, which is pretty cool too. <laughs> you do take that into account, but when you are using your Rolling Thunder, that kind of brings up an interesting thing up where if you're playing against something like Monkey King, or clinks both of their ultimates are really good and they also do damage to you even while you're in rolling thunder and ranged heroes are really good against your ultimate so you want to be quite careful against those things but you don't want to do it rush you want to make sure that you can time your uh shield crash at the right time because if you do it wrong what ends up happening is this holy sh right you don't want that happening in your real game so uh, learning how to time your shield crash properly like this uh, and getting used to it with delay is important as well because your ping will vary in your matches so i want to look at then like with items with pangolier's ulti without like caring really about spots so sometimes you use your ulti to just get out of somewhere what you can do is like say roll down through the tree lines and then like teleport while you're getting like still rolling away uh, and you'll still keep rolling into the fountain so it doesn't cancel your ulti the other one that's quite commonly done the later parts of the game is while the enemy doesn't have vision of you you're in the fog you'll use your ult and blink in to start the first bounce and then you might say bounce over here and get another bounce again and you might even bounce off say this and pretty much the idea is is that you'll always end up short ensuring that you hit your first rolling thunder now I want to go on to squash buckle and one of the things that I was talking about is playing defensive sometimes when people play defensive they will say running back to their tower they'll use it like this the problem with that is that when you go like this uh, you're now turned in like this direction but you'll want to run this way so a lot of the time using your squash buckle in the direction that you're planning on running next is really important so sometimes you come across this scenario where the enemy is trying to say deny your range creep so let's say this creep is on low health and it's in deny range and what you can do is from a distance is use your squash buckle like this and get the last hit now when you do this your squash buckle is now on cooldown so a lot of the time you don't have a defensive capability shield crash which is your second spell is not that great at escaping either so you want to back off there's a big disadvantage of using it is that 
you pretty much get the last hit on the range creep, but you have a higher potential of dying soon after if they play aggressive on you. Now the advantage of against Slark of using Shield Crash is that when Slark pounces you, if you walk to the maximum range and use Shield Crash, it actually ends the leash. You're not able to use Squash Buckle while in the leash, as you see if I try and use it, it says ability not castable while leashed. Now the problem is, is that sometimes people make a mistake with this and they use Shield Crash like this and you're still in the leash afterwards. You actually have to walk to the very edge like this and then once you get stuck or stop moving then you use shield crash and you get out of it it's a really nice interaction with juggernaut the interaction with squash buckle is really important to know uh, you can literally just use squash buckle even there i got disarmed straight after so juggernaut is uh, countered really hard by this and uh, he's pangolier is one of the heroes that can very easily keep laning against juggernaut even when his omni slash is available to him one of the other items that's really good on Pangolier is Abyssal Blade and the reason why is just because of the fact that you can slide in on someone and then Abyssal Blade him. Now there is a small delay on this, you do have to wait till all your squash buckle attacks go off until you can use Abyssal Blade. So sometimes they might not get stunned entirely the first time with like the attacks from the bash but uh, if say a hero uses BKB you could be in the fog for the enemy and you could just jump in on them and then start stunning them. You can pretty much save your allies and turn around fights by this by just standing at a distance and jumping in. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this, any Dota videos, make sure you subscribe and also check out the Discord.